There's just one more thing that I want you to know about adiabats. I'm gonna get you a pressure volume diagram as usual, and you'll recall that isotherms on this diagram, isotherms always have the same temperature, and you know that PV is NRT, and so if the temperature is the same and the number of molecules or particles is the same, and this is a a law, this is a constant here, this R, and then, um, well, P times V is going to be the same, so you're going to have these isotherms that look like inverses. And that's cool. Um, but, oh, let me label these guys as isotherms. Isotherms have PV equals a constant. But, uh, <clears throat> But adiabats, adiabats are a little bit different. Adiabats, well, this is the answer to you, the question that we posed in a previous video. Adiabats are always steeper. Adiabats have they have pressure times volume to the gamma power. Yeah, that's the Greek letter gamma, alpha, beta, gamma. That's the third Greek letter and so adiabats are doing something like this. They're like always steeper and always cutting through like that. So this is an adiabat. An adiabat is a line where something is undergoing adiabatic, well in this case it would be adiabatic expansion, this would be adiabatic compression. So that's why temperature changes. I guess we can really, really argue this. Let's argue this. We'll start from a single point right here. And we're saying if we keep it the same temperature, the gas will go like this. But if I'm able to compress it, faster so that no heat can escape, then the temperature will increase, and that's an adiabat. So that's what's happening inside your gasoline engine. There's compression that's so fast that no heat can escape, and so the temperature rises at the same time as the pressure increases. And adiabatic lines, well, now you can make all kinds of beautiful, you can make all kinds of beautiful shapes. You can make a shape where like, uh, here's a pressure volume diagram, a little cute one here, and you're gonna see problems like this as you go on in physics. Uh, you could go along an ISO therm and then an adiabat. Oh shoot, I switched, I switched colors on you. Sorry, you could go along an isotherm and then a steeper adiabat and then back down along a different isotherm and then finish it off with another steeper adiabat. And every one of these lines is curved and boy, if you wanna get those things with, um, with equations, you're gonna to have to know some pretty fancy calculus. But ultimately, we've seen that you're trying to find the area inside of here and that would be equal to the work done by the gas. Cool, uh, or I guess the work done on the gas, depending on whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. And you'll have to figure out whether clockwise or counterclockwise is positive work done by the gas, because that's your problem. You have to understand that. But uh, an adiabat, now this gamma is a little bit of a mystery, and we don't quite have a, um, we don't quite have a feel for what it might be at all. I know that it's more than one, Yep, cool. And I also am going to define gamma to be the ratio of the heat capacity at constant pressure to the heat capacity at constant volume. So for an ideal gas, for an ideal gas, we're saying that gamma is, well, I guess it's five halves R divided by three halves R. So in this case, gamma is five thirds. Almost two, actually. So that makes sense that it'd be a much steeper line, and this would be true for monatomic, sorry, monatomic ideal gas. That's the case. It's a little bit different for other gases, and it ends up being true for monatomic real gases as well. You don't need the fact that the volume actually goes to zero. That's it for adiabats. They're rather cool, and they enable you to go um, between different isotherms smoothly without any of these kind of artificial feeling straight lines, kind of weird, right?